Here we are in section 5.5 with answers to number 7 through number 12. And again, same instructions, factor the following. If non-factorable, label as prime. Can't factor them. So we're going to keep all five of these methods handy here. And OK, number 7. Ooh, I don't like how that's written. I kind of like the descending order just so we can see what's going on. So we're going to write 2x to the fourth and then minus 5x cubed plus 2x squared, and then minus the 5x. There, I can kind of see what's going on. Now, notice uh, some of you might be tempted to jump right to four terms, but let's not do that. Look at this. Remember, ta-da, ta-da, pull out that greatest common factor, if at all possible. We can pull out an x out of everything. We get 2x cubed minus 5x squared plus 2x minus 5. Now let's do the grouping where we chop it in half and we've got this first half. What can we pull out of there? Looks like we can pull another x out. We get 2, oh, we can pull an x squared out. We get 2x minus 5. Oh, notice that 2x minus 5 and 2x minus 5 right there. We've got plus, if you want to put parentheses around it so you can see it as, a, as its own entity so it matches up here or even pull out a 1 so you can see that a little bit better. Let's pull it out this direction and we can write it as x squared plus 1, that's this guy right here, and 2x minus 5. And you'll notice that this x, we just kind of ignored him for a little while, but he's still there. This is the full factorization right down here. Now we do need to double check. This has an x squared on it, and it's two terms, but this is not a minus sign, so it is a sum of squares can't go down any further. So that is indeed the factored form of it. Okay, next one. Here we have number 8, x squared minus y squared. Is there a greatest common factor? Remember to check that every time. Greatest common factor, and no, there's not. Four terms? Nope. Three terms? Three terms? Nope. So it is a special case, and in this case, we're looking at a difference of squares. And yes, that indeed is a difference, and we have a square and a square, so that breaks up into x plus y and x minus y. There we go, number 9. Is there a greatest common factor? Don't jump to the difference of squares yet. And yes, there is a greatest common factor. See, you're tempted to jump there. Ooh, whoever made that problem was kind of trying to be tricky because you're like, 16b squared, that's a square. We got a minus sign, we got difference of squares. You do not. Go ahead and take out a b and look at what you actually have. You have 16b minus 9. That's a perfect square, but this is not because that's only a b. We are right now done. We can't go anywhere further on that one. Number 10. Let's look at this guy. Here we have 4x squared plus 30x plus 100. Yeah, that looks like a perfect square, perfect square, but we better check, see if we've got a greatest common factor first. Pull out a 2, and we get 2x squared plus 15x minus 50. What's left here is a trinomial and it has a leading coefficient not equal to 1. So we are right here on the fourth method. And so we take 2 times negative 50 is negative 100. You can have 1 and 100, 2 and 50, 3, no, 4, 4 and 25, uh, 5 and 20, 6, no, 7, no, 8, no, 9, no, yeah, 10, 10. There we go. So this looks like the one we're going to get. They have to be opposite. A plus on the 20 and a minus on the 5 will make a positive 15. If you have them the other way around, you get a minus 15, and we don't have that. So we split this 15 up into the minus 5x and the plus 20x. There's your minus 50. There's your 2x squared. We'll come back and pick up that 2 at the very end. So here, can we pull anything out of there? Yes, indeed, an x, 2x minus 5. And out of here, it looks like we can pull a 10. And we get a 2x minus 5. And so let's pull these guys out this direction. 2x minus 5. And we're left with this x and that plus 10. And don't forget this guy coming down right here. Choo! And there we have the factored form. They're all down to first power. All righty. Let's try that next one. Number 11. 28x squared plus 65 plus 28x, just a 28 there. Hmm. Alrighty, let's look at it, and we have um, 
Ooh, it's not a perfect square. Is there any greatest common factor at all? Nope. So we're going to have to jump down here to number 4. We get 28, 65, and 28. So 28 times 28. have to plug that in my calculator. 28 times 28 is 784. Ooh, this is going to be tough to see if something adds up to 65. Let's try it. That's 1 and 784. That's 2 and looks like 392. Uh, 4 then goes into it. And that would be 196. Um, 7 goes into it. And it goes into it 112 times. 8 goes into it 98 times. Um, 9, 10, uh, 14. We'll go into it 56 times. Looks like 16. We'll go into it 49 times. And then 28 goes into it 28 times. Whew. Do any of those add up to 65? Oh my word, there is one that does that. That is amazing. Alrighty, so now we have 28x squared plus 16x plus 49x plus 28. Okay, pull this out, we get, uh, looks like we can pull out a 4 and an x, and we get 7x plus 4. And over here, we can pull out a 7, and we get 7x plus 4. Oh, now that's kind of interesting. Look at what comes out of there. If we pull that guy out to this side, we get 7x plus 4, and 4x plus 7. Whoo! That was a long one. Alrighty, last one. 4, 8 of the 5th plus 16. Uh, this is a sum. This is not a perfect square, but it doesn't matter yet because we're going to go up here to the greatest common factor. And we can indeed pull out a 4, and we get 8 of the 5th plus 4. Not a perfect square, so we are done. There you go.